بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم so um, respected brothers inshallah you can hear me all of you yes assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah so a quick overview of ghusl what we discussed last week i won't go through the practical ghusl i won't go through the practical because i was thinking of going through the practical ghusl again but um, brother usman he he tells me that the video is on youtube and inshallah he's going to send the link again so you can go you can look through it so inshallah hopefully that the main thing is like something's written and something's practical two different things so when you actually see the ghusl being done and, and alhamdulillah last week we went through that hopefully that will just refresh your minds so i'll just go through what we did last week we did um ghusl So I said last week as well that amongst the six rights that one Muslim has upon another is that when one dies, he or she is given a bath. Obviously, if it's a, if it's a man, then it's a, it will be the male that will be giving the, the bath to the, the male and the female for the female. And we had some questions on that last week as well, which we discussed. The person who bathes the dead body and hides its faults, 40 of his major sins will be forgiven. Back home in India and Pakistan, I think this is some looked uh, frowned upon and they bathe in the dead body and that. But we can see from this narration here and where we can understand that is no ordinary amal and it is something that, inshallah, that will be beneficial for us uh, on the day of Qiyamah. And, and where we will be in need of each and every single virtue. And just imagine how many, um, just look at the sins, 40 major sins are forgiven. Imagine that. Achha. So Alhamdulillah, last week I went through this as well, that why we need um, each and every, um, the, the gloves, all these things, why we need these things for. And um, just go through, quickly go through it again, thick gloves we need, because some parts of the body, which is, um, which is a sutter, and I think I clarified last time, there was a bit of a doubt as regards to the sutter, that um, I, I was saying that it's below the belly button to below the knees, and that is the case. So just below the belly button, obviously it can't be so down when the private parts are exposed, but just below the belly button to below the knees, that's your setter. So we tend to see that when we are bathing the deceased, then it's not necessary to, to cover the whole body because that would make things difficult. As, as long as the important parts, meaning the setter are covered, it will make um, life very easy for those people who are bathing the deceased. So make sure that you can keep the towel from the belly button to below the knees, and that remains to be covered at all times. At no point should it be exposed. Even if it's children, if it's a son that's doing the gusel, still that part needs to be covered. And the thick gloves, because when we're doing the istinja, when we're doing the istinja and cleaning the, the back passage and the front, then we're not, we're not touching or feeling something, the thick gloves are there. Or maybe at that time, a sponge is also useful. Scissors we need, because if any clothes are on, then we need to cut them to take them off or anything else. Like um, if, if the body comes from the hospital, normally there's tags there, we need to cut the tags off. And bucket you need. The reason why I said the bucket is because um, where they come for mixture at the end, and they will, uh, will have a bucket of warm water and will um, smush the camphor, make it into powder, and then mix it into the into the water. Normally in the olden days, they needed the bucket because that's where they use the, the bucket for actually bathing the disease. Nowadays in our, especially in this country, we've got showers. So we don't really need the bucket for the water. Two pieces of dark thick material to cover the body while gusel take place. One at the beginning and after the gusel has been completed, or you see that first, first cloth will become very, very wet. So we need to change that with the, um, with a fresh one. Towels will need the towels in order to dry the body. Disposable gloves is also for the other people. One person who will be doing the stinja parts and that, he'll have the thick gloves and the rest of them can have ordinary disposable gloves. Cotton wool we need and the reason why is to, is to clean the nose as well, clean the mouth as well. I said last time that if a person says in the state of a major uncleanliness and a hadith akbar, and then we tend to clean their nose, nostrils, and at the same time, with the aid of the cotton wool, we clean the mouth as well. 
Sometimes you'll find that the mouth is open and at least we can cover the mouth with a cotton wool in order that the, no water goes inside the, in, inside the deceased person. Same to, um, if the, uh, the cotton wool is also put into the nostrils, again, no water can go into the body through the, the nostril area. Um, soap we need, because we will soap the body. Comfort, I've already said, two, two places where comfort is needed. The last, the last washing, the last water that we'll be using after we've cleaned the body, then the, then the bucket of water, which has got the comfort mixed into it, we'll use it for the whole body. And then a small pot of comfort mixture of paste that we make right at the end after the, when, the, when we're doing the kafan, at that particular time, the five places of sujood, and when the person goes into sajda, the forehead rests on the ground, the palms rest on the ground, the nose rests on the ground, the knees also rest on the ground, and the toes also rest on the ground. So these five places, we will, we will paste with the comfort paste, we will put onto these particular places. Okay? And iter, that will be used on the beard and the head. And at the same time, I said last time as well, on the, the kafan itself, it's mustahab to put kafan, um, to put iter onto the kafan. So that's the reason why we've got um, all this stuff there. Method of bathing the deceased, the body of the deceased should be placed on a table. Water should be able to run freely. And Alhamdulillah, we've got that facility in the masjid. But just before, just before you um, uh, put the body onto the table, make sure that the table itself is clean and, and fumigate the table. You've got um, agarbatti or something like that. With that, and a fumigate, fumigate the, um, the, the table itself, even in the room to have a, a loban or agarbatti there, it's good because sometimes the smell is coming out from the deceased body and it's not nice. So if agarbatti is there, that will hide that smell. The deceased should be covered with thick material from the belly button to the knees. And for the women, it's different. The deceased clothes should be removed. And as I said, where removing is concerned, most of the time, it will need to be cut. The washer should start by saying, Bismillah, wash his head further. And after that, the first thing, like I explained yesterday, um, last week, and I showed as well, just remember that the first thing we're going to start is with the stinger. And after the, after anything that's on the body is taken off, even the nappy, if the nappy is on, take the nappy out and have a black bag ready and whatever rubbish is coming out, put it into the black bag. And, and after that, the first thing that you'll do is, is stinger without looking at the private parts, clean the front and the back. And as I, as I um, showed last week as well, that raise the legs a little bit and uh, gently massage the, the stomach downwards and inshallah, whatever is in the, in the belly, inshallah, will come out. Whatever comes out, you wash. Yes. After you've done the istinja, then you do the wuzu for disease. Obviously, you can't gargle the mouth um, or you can't pour water into the mouth because whatever you put into the mouth, it's going to stay there. The way to do it, as I, as I said in the beginning today as well, with the aid of cotton wool, and clean the mouth and clean the nose. After that, wash the arms, wash hands and arms Till the elbow, meaning including the elbow, like we do for wudu. Make massage of the head, wash both feet, and apply soap to the head. After you've done the wudu, and wudu will include the face, the arms, the masa, and the feet. After you've done that, then the next part. So istinja first, after that the wudu, and after wudu, turn to the head. So put soap onto the, onto the face and the head, and wash it with them. After you've soaked the head and the face, then wash it. Okay, after you've done that, turn the deceased on the left side and from the head to the, um, and wash from the head to the toe three times. Obviously we're using a, use, using a shower, so we're not going to be able to count. But, but look, the main thing is that we clean that, we're turning to the left side in order that we can clean the right side. And so right side, first we'll wet the right side, and we'll soak the right side, and then we'll make sure that we wash it properly. Each and every part should be washed. You know? Then the same thing, we turn to the left side, and uh, so we turn to the right side in order that we can wash the left side of the body. Again, from top to the bottom, soak the body and wash it properly. Once you've done the whole body, the washing, then you'll, you'll sit the deceased person up. 
and two, three people will hold from the back and um, raise the legs a little bit. The body will have softened because of the hot water. Again, massage the stomach, whatever comes out from the stomach and just wash it off. If something does come out, then there's no need to do the whole ghusl again. And you just need to wash the najasat, the napaki, or the uncleanliness off and just leave it at that, okay? And once you've done that, then alhamdulillah, that ghusl to a great extent has been done. And now what we would need is the, 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 the bucket of water in which we have the kamphor mixture and then use that bucket of water and turn the body to the left side in order that we can put this comfort mixture from the right side from the top to the bottom. Shall I just use the water that we have in the bucket? All right. So that would be the whole gusel done. After that, we would dry the body and swap the cloth that was there because that one will be wet. Put a dry cloth there. And then um, after that, um, inshallah, the body will be ready for kafan. Just a few things here that those people who are bathing the deceased, do they need to take a bath after that they bathe the deceased? It is something which is recommended, but it's not something which is first. It's not obligatory. Many times people won't have the time, but if one has that time, then they should take the bath. There is no Islamic teaching of reading the Quran during Ghusl. During Ghusl, that people, some people start reading La ilaha illallah, or something like that. We can't find anything in the sunnah that whilst a person is giving ghusl, they should be reciting anything. Or we, we tend to, even when we've got, we were carrying the body, then lots of people, they have this habit that as soon as they see a dead body, then they, they, they're, they're raising, ashadu Allah, kalima, shahadat, kalima. These things are, are not proven. Even in the graveyard, for that matter, even in the graveyard, when you're taking the deceased body, on your shoulders to the graveyard. And there is no need for people to shout Kalima Shahadat. It is something that should be said in the heart. Keep it in the heart. And in the graveyard, it's, it's, it's a time of not shouting and that, but rather just thinking that one day, well, a time will come when somebody, today I'm bathing somebody, tomorrow somebody will bathe me. Today I'm shrouding somebody, tomorrow somebody will shroud me. Today, people are taking me to the graveyard and I'm, I'm taking somebody to the graveyard. Tomorrow, a time will come where somebody will be taking me. What have I done for that particular time or that particular occasion? You know, these times of gusal and kafan and graveyards are ideal time for a person to sort of um, rectify themselves and, and make sure that they, where, the, where their life is going. Think about the direction that they are taking as far as their life is concerned. What have I done you know, for my own death? And when I'm being carried here and when I'll be put into the grave, what have I done for that? It's an ideal time. So ulama have written that this is a time to actually contemplate that in the heart. And if somebody wants to recite the kalima, things like that, then in the heart, there's no need to shout. Okay. What tends to happen is something that's been passed on. Because people, older people are doing it, then the next generation does it, then the next generation. That's why we tend to, it just comes on. I've mentioned it a few times here in the masjid as well, but it tends to just pass on. And I'm going to show you practically how it's done. That's the way to do it, I think. But just, I'll just go through it quickly, and then inshallah we'll go through it practically. And Alhamdulillah, our volunteer is here as well to be kafaned or shrouded. So Inshallah, we'll do that as well. So for men, there's three pieces. First is the, the kameez. The kameez is basically from the shoulders to below the knees. So what you would do is, looking at a person, measure what's between the, the, the shoulder to the knees, just below the knees, and then double that. So for example, from the shoulder to the knees, if it's one meter, then double that, so it'll become two meters. The reason why is then that two meters of cloth, you will fold and then you'll cut a hole in the middle. And that's the one that will go over the head. And that's the first thing that a person will be covered with, the deceased person. Okay, and then will come the izar. And izar will be just over, above the head 
to just below the toes. That's the second piece, which is known as the izar. And the third one is a lifafa, which is, I would say, about six inches to seven inches above the head to six, seven inches um, below the feet. Okay? And that's called the lifafa. So that's three pieces that we need. What sort of cloth should we use? Cotton cloth, okay? not too expensive, okay? not too expensive, not silk or anything, and not too expensive at the end of it's going to, it shouldn't be israf. We shouldn't be wasting money. A lot of people, even at this particular time in, when a person is, being, uh, is departing from this world, a lot of money is wasted. Okay? And what I would say is that instead of wasting, if somebody really wants to spend money, then give Sadqa Jari on behalf of the deceased. At least that will benefit him. And having expensive material for the, for the grave or having a coffin and an expensive coffin for the grave is going into the ground. Eventually, the soul's or soul will already have left. Eventually, it's all going to go and turn into soil or clay. And so what, what benefit is that to the deceased person? Rather, if he'd, if he'd, done, if he'd given this money, uh, to Sadqatul uh, into the masjid or a madrasa, good causes to charity, then inshallah, as soon as that but the deceased person goes into the grave, he will start benefiting from, from the charity that you have given on his behalf. Okay? So inshallah, what we do now is um, they're going to adjust the camera in such a way that you'll be able to see me um, cutting the kafan. And then we'll have a question. Molly just, just one question. Yeah. You know, like with the ihram cloth, yeah. the ihram cloth should not be stitched. Is there any like restrictions with the kafan cloth Same that it should that not be kafan, stitched yeah. or anything? There's no, there's no conditions like uh, with ihram because of the, the dumb aspect to it and penalty aspect to the ihram and that. With this, again, it'll be simple cloth. It won't be stitched, simple cloth. There'll be no sleeves or anything just sheets of uh, sheets of white cloth. It can't right. be any other color as well, but it's better that it's white. Okay. Okay. G. So this is laying the cloth down, and inshallah, then I'll cut the coffin in front of you, and then we'll we'll shroud the person as well, and then inshallah, if you have any questions, you can ask. So this is Dawood. Dawood, come come here. This is Dawood, who's going to be my um, temporary deceased. Allah give him a long, happy, healthy life. So, if he was to lay down, okay, Dawood's laying down. So, basically, my kafan, the first thing I'm going to cut, okay, is a lifafa. And lifafa would be about six to seven inches. The first thing that I will be cutting is a lifafa, and that will be six inches or seven inches below his feet and about seven inches above his head. Okay. It will come from there above his head to below him, and that is, that's the first, that will be basically, that will go on him last, but when somebody picks him up, that's the first part of cloth that will be on him, okay? So I'm gonna cut that. Can you, you can see this? That's this yes. is lifafa. So that's the first piece of cloth, cloth that I've cut. It'll go at the bottom. On top of that will come the izar, which will, which will be just a little bit less than the lifafa. So I've done about seven inches below his feet and seven inches above his head. So the next one will be about four inches below his feet and four inches above his head.
So this was the Izar. The next one. So this one, what would happen is from from down's shoulder to below his knees, to below his knees, up to his what you up to his calf. And I would measure that and I would double that. Yeah, and the reason why I'm gonna double it is because then I'm gonna make that into a little shirt. So then I fold it and put a little cut in the middle. So by putting the cut in the middle, I'll be able to cover him and then from, from the back as well and from the front and up to, up to below his knees. So Okay. Okay, show the, the whole thing. So basically, open it. Can you see? Can you see? Yes. Yeah? So this is a, the large piece that, or large sheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold it. Yeah. So we folded this and it's come to this. What we, what we will do now is, you know, we'll, we'll make a little cut here so that his head can go through it. So that's the three pieces of couple. Have you have you um, seen this? Have you yeah. wanted to see? It? Yes. Understand it as well or G. G. Okay. मोरना साहब ये जो कट आपने लगाया है ना ये अगर आप कैमरे के करीब करके दिखा दें हेड को डालने के लिए फिर बोलो फिर बोलो या इफ यू कैन जस्ट शो दैट द कट यू मेड इट क्लोज टू द कैमरा सो वी कैन सी दैट हाउ डिड यू कट इट अच्छा ये मैंने कट इधर दरमियान में एक कट किया ये ऐसा कट था ये कट किया इस तरह और फिर साइड के ऊपर यूं कट थोड़ा सा किया ताकि आसानी हो जाए उनके उनके सर अंदर आने के लिए ठीक वी कट इन दिडल Okay, so I lay this out like this. You can see it now. Okay. So it's that I that I that I cut and I, I fold it into two. In order to make things easier, what I would do is I would fold it one part of the this cloth, the folded cloth. One part of the folded cloth. I will turn it like this. Did you, did you, um, would you, would, were you able to see that? 
Yeah, you're folding the cloth up, yeah, but the camera is not positioned right. The camera needs to be more towards the person laying down towards the head, because right now it's at an angle. He's not laying down at the moment. Okay. I just wanted to show you what I've done. The reason, the reason would be that I would, I would lay the deceased person on the coffin now. Okay. And all I would have to do is, so when I when I lay him down, then I would put his head into there, and then I just have to hold it back on again. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do to Dao. If Dao can make his way here instead of us lifting him up to here. <laughs> so so Molly Sab, um, once you've washed the deceased body, you have to pick up the body and put it on the floor, like in the masjid that you've done. You don't do it on the uh, metal bath. Yeah, that's what we do. What we, what, right. we do is, what, we do, what we do is that once we've washed the deceased body, okay, yeah. from then we take us to, we, we, after the body is dried. Yes. And we take us, we have a stretcher in the, in the Gusal Khana, uh, in the, where, where we um, bathe the dead body. Then we, we put, put the, the body onto the stretcher and we bring the body onto the coffin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we lay the body down on the on the coffin itself. Okay, so okay. Um, I think that will be later on, inshallah. So at some point, inshallah, hopefully when this lockdown ends, we'll call you all again and we'll have a proper yeah. So he will lay on the body now. So he, he will lay onto the coffin. Remember the, the cut that I've done? Yeah. So I, I folded the body, folded the coffin in such a way that here, that I can just do this. So, can you see this? Yes. How, how, how the coffin is just easily going on. Right? Yeah, and then I just need to roll this coffin on, onto him, and that's his, that's the coffin that to be done. Did you manage to get that? Yes. Do you, do you want to show so At this point, we would have the, the, um, the towel covering the sutter, isn't it? Yeah, the towel is still there. Okay. The towel is still there. And Alhamdulillah, once I've done this, I've done the, uh, I've unrolled the, the, the coffin, and now his setter is covered with the towel that's that's underneath that I will take out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will take the, the towel out, and now I just leave him as it is, because now is the time for I'll have the control placed with me for the five places of sujood that I mentioned. The, the, um, the forehead, the, the forehead, nose, okay. the palms, the palms, the knees, and the toes. So five places, the kampur mixture will, will put the paste on, right? And once we've done that, then we can get some perfume, itar, and put the itar on his beard and his head, and put some itar on the, on, on the kafan itself as well. Right, and once that's done now, now it, the body is ready to wrap up. And I think the one simple thing when we're wrapping up the body will be one by one. So first we'll we'll start with the kameez, then we'll do the izar, and then we'll do the lifafa. And something I've never forgotten since I was a child, and my teacher taught me this. Something I've never forgotten is you know the, the way that we fold our hands in salah. The first the left hand on top of the left hand, the right hand. Left hand goes first, on top of that, the right hand. Same will be the position of this um, kafan as well. That first will fold the left on top of the on top of that the right. Then the left on top of the, the right. Then the left on top of that the right. So you'll never forget it. So this just, just imagine yourself in salah that how would I uh, fold my hands? Okay. So once I've done this, so now we've done all the, the pasting and the and the, the perfume and that. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll start the okay. so that's the the kameez done 
And after that, the whole cover is closed. That's the Izar done. On top of that, the Izar. And on top of that, the Alipata. And that's a complete. Yep. Then you have these three pieces of cloth. Three strings, three, what can it, three strips. Three strips, one for the middle and one at the, at the toe and one for the above the head. That will tie the coffin so it doesn't open up. Remember, this is not part of the coffin. This is not part of the coffin. That's why in the grave, once you put the body into the grave, our elders, some of our Muftiyan and scholars have actually said that because this is not part of the coffin, it should be taken out. Most people leave it in the grave, but because it's not part of the coffin, I think you can take it out and it can be thrown away after. But this is not part of the coffin. So it's something that once the body is put into the grave, and this should be taken out because it's not part of the coffin. So that would be the coffin completed. Can you show the tying knot? Yes. Yeah. Have to tie a knot. Yes. Yeah. And even even when you're tying the knot, and they, in the same way that you'd be tying a shoelace, and they're like this. Just, um, just very because you're going to take it out. Just a simple knot like this, right? Like tying a shoelace. But all you need to do is um this, and it, it comes off. And it's three places, two places. Three places. So below the feet, above the head, and one in the middle. And the whole reason for this is to make sure that the cup and stays in place and it doesn't open up and expose the body in any way. Okay. Once that is done, now the body is ready and for Salatul Janaza. Inshallah, we will see you all next week. Inshallah. Inshallah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك